Hi, we're going to talk about the Plain 502 page that you're going to create. I'm looking at a sample page right now in Dreamweaver, but you can also see an example of it online and linked from the Simons page. So the goal of this project is to create a single web page that lists all the projects in the course. As this course is updated, the project list might change, but the basic idea is that you have one place that lists all of the projects that you create. We call this assignment the plain 502 page because at first it's just going to be a basic HTML page. However, you will later, as the course goes on, create a new version of this page where you use CSS to style it. And so a new version of the site is going to look something like this. We are not expecting a lot of creativity with this first assignment. It's called the plain 502 page because we basically want it just to be a plain list of the assignments. For this project, you can actually just follow along and pretty much do exactly what we have right here. You can even copy this text right here for the assignments, or if the assignments have changed, make sure that the project list actually reflects what's in the syllabus. If you want to see the code behind this page, you can simply in Firefox right click and you view page source and you can see the code. Throughout this semester, with future assignments, you can also view the source code for the individual examples to get an idea of how they were created. So now let's take a look at the site in Dreamweaver. Something needs to be said first about a change in focus in this course. For years the focus was on using XHTML. However, HTML5 is quickly becoming the standard that all web developers are using and so for this course we are updating it so that you will be learning HTML5. So what's the difference? Well, there are some great websites out there that will give you some basics as well as lynda.com has some videos on the differences between HTML4, XHTML, and HTML5. For the focus of this course, all you really need to know is that some of the basic changes that happened with HTML5 is there's some new elements that allow you to structure the site differently. Some of these new elements also improve the usability of the site and we'll get into usability later throughout the semester. And then there's some other elements with video and audio and forms that are great. But really, all you need to know right now is that with HTML5, it's simplified how you create a web page and how you structure a web page. So what do I mean? Well, your typical website has a basic kind of navigation or a basic layout if you think of it. And so basic left navigation layout has some type of banner image a left navigation, main content, and a footer area. And if you scroll down, some pages might have the navigation on the right, but the same elements are pretty there. Sometimes a site might have a top navigation menu where it's a banner image, the navigation's up top, the main content, and the footer. And then some bigger sites might even combine these elements where there's a top navigation and a left navigation. But regardless of what they do, for the longest time what would happen is with HTML4, XHTML, with CSS is that the way you had to structure your site is you would create these things called divs and so let's zoom in to try to give you an idea of what the code looks like. And so within the HTML you would have something called a div called a container and then a div called a header and then a div called navigation, content, footer, etc. And then you would have to use CSS to style each of these. And so that's the way we did it for the longest time. And, and you'll notice that a lot of websites still are built with XHTML. In fact, a lot of HTML5 is not even fully adopted by all modern browsers right now. But this would be the way that you would basically translate this kind of layout into a web page is you'd basically create divs. Well, HTML5 has actually simpled this a great deal. So some of the elements of HTML5 that we like is the first is the doc type doc type used to be this long complicated thing now it's a real simple just tells you we're using HTML and if you go down even the head it's all simplified but this is really what I focus on rather than divs with IDs like we had here div ID equals header HTML5 basically recognized that there are these recurring elements like we talked about a header navigation, content, that every website has. With HTML5, we basically have new tags where we have a header tag, a nav tag, a section tag, and a footer tag. There are a number of other ones, and specifically there's an article tag. And so there's some debate whether an article tag should go within a section tag or whether section tags go within article tags. 
if you want to even kind of see the example, if you even just go to a Google image search of HTML5 structure, you can quickly see that some people see that within a section tag you can have header tags and article tags, where others see that you don't have section tags, you can just use an article tag. While HTML5 has been around a couple of years, web developers are still figuring out what's the best way to go about using it. But now if we get back to the plain 502 page, here's an example of the 502 plain page using XHTML, and here's it using HTML5. Not that much of a difference. But if we take a look at the code, and I'm going to take a look at split view, and split view allows me to see the code on the left and what it looks like on the right. And as I go down, I can see a simplified doc type, meta tag, simplified. And down here, you can see that I use the header tag, which is a new HTML5 tag, to add the header information for the page. I then created a section tag where I entered my name and other information. I created another section where I listed basically the assignments, the projects, and the course. And then at the very bottom, you'll notice that I created a footer tag. And this is where I put the validation information, which we will learn about later, as well as some copyright information. So for the plain 502 page, don't worry about the formatting and what it looks like. You basically want to focus on just getting the content there, have an accurate list of the projects in the course that mirror the syllabus, and be sure when you're creating this to look at the rubric, so to make sure that you have all the required elements and specifically to make sure that you're using HTML5 tags when appropriate. So now that you have a basic idea of what the plain 502 page is, I'm going to spend just a couple quick minutes showing you how you can go about starting this. So in Dreamweaver you'd go to File, New, and up here blank page HTML5, select None, and over here you'll notice doc type. And so you want to make sure that you choose HTML5. But in this case, because I'm going to be using HTML5 moving forward for all of the assignments, I'm going to hit Cancel, and I'm going to actually go to my Preferences. And this is in a different place on a Mac, but you basically want to go to Preferences. And if you go down to New Document, you can change your default document type. We're going to change it to HTML5 and hit OK. So now, I'm going to hit File New. And what you'll notice is that when I select HTML under blank page, none, that automatically HTML5 is the doc type. So I'm going to hit Create. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to call this plain 502.html, and I'm saving it in my 502 folder. You'll notice already that it has the HTML5 doc type and the other information, and so I'm ready to go to create my first HTML5 document. So for this assignment, you should use a number of HTML5 elements. So I'm going to go back and forth and look at the example, and so I can look at the example here in Dreamweaver, but I could easily just look at the one online, which is likely what you'll do. So the first thing you want to do is give a title. So you'll see it says untitled. You can actually type it right in there or you can go over here and then if you look at the example and you can always right click and look at the code you'll see that when I start going down that I actually have a comment now comments are important because they allow you to give yourself notes as well as if other people are looking at your code it helps make sense so if you're so later when you find a good template you want to use the comments will help make sense of it so so if you're in split view or code view, you can go down here on the left and you will see this apply comment and I can add a comment. And so comments are important. So let's look at other things here when we start going down the code. So then this is using the header tag, a couple section tags, and footer tags. So we're going to start with the header tag and currently if you were going to enter divs you can always rather than um, type them in the split view or code view you'd be able to go to insert layout objects currently Dreamweaver 5.5 does not give you the option to choose these HTML5 new tags but hopefully Dreamweaver 6 will so in this case I'm going to type in header I'm just going to close it 
And so now I have a place to add my header information. So if I look at the example, I can see the name of the course. And your page doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it's just to give you a model of something you can follow. I can then highlight it. I can go down to Format. I'm going to make sure I have HTML selecting the Properties Inspector, not CSS. So with, so with HTML, I'm going to select Heading 1. You'll notice that that's got the Heading 1 tags, and it's within my header tag, so that looks great. So I'm going to look down here. So after the header tag, we get into a section tag with your personal information. So after the header tag, I'm going to hit enter and do a section tag. Give myself a note. Alright, so now I can get over here and I can always toggle back to just design view if I want to. Hit enter and you notice how when I hit enter it does a double space. And that's because if you look at code view, it's actually adding a paragraph tag. If you don't like that, I'm going to undo this. If you hold down shift enter, it'll add a hard tag. So, so I'm just typing in some information and spend some time playing with, you know, the property inspector and the different um, aspects of Dreamweaver. So I can hit bold, then I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to my email and I'm going to go to insert email link and there and then OK. All right. So we get that section tag. Now we're going to add another section tag. We hit enter. All right, and so this is where you're going to actually spend some time entering the assignments for the course. And so be sure to look at the syllabus to make sure you have the most accurate and the newest list of projects for this course. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to following this example, I'm going to add a horizontal line and that's this gray bar that goes across and then so I could just hand code this but I'm going to go to insert HTML horizontal rule and there's the horizontal rule and if I look at the example some more okay this has some text here and then project list so I'm just going to jump in here and type project list And then, if you notice on here, you can hit the unordered list, or what we think of as bullets, and you can add the assignments. And I might be getting the names wrong, so, ah, netiquette page. So that's the first. And so spend some time typing out all the assignments in the course, and then later as the course progresses, you will highlight these and add links down here to these specific assignments. And so after you fill out the project list, the last thing is to add the footer tag. Let's look at the example, and that's where you have really the copyright and the validation. We'll learn more about how to validate your code in the next video, but for now let's focus on adding copyright. So now I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to insert HTML special characters and copyright and type in year and my information and just like that this asterisk tells me I need to save it I'm going to save it and then once you complete all this information you're then going to want to upload this to the EdTech2 server so you want to hit connect and I always like to expand this and so so once I expand I find my 502 folder over here be aware that your remote server will look a little differently because I have access to the entire EdTech2 server so you should just see a slash here and then 502 folder that you created I'm going to click and drag my plain one over and it says do you want to put dependent files I'm going to say yes and you can always expand this and see that it uploaded correctly. So in Firefox, I'm going to type in the name of the server first. After I type in the name of the server, I'm going to type in the name of my Bronco Web username. Mine is Patrick Lowenthal. And then I'm going to type in the folder 
that the file is in. Then I'm going to type in the name of the file. And if any one of these are incorrect, you have a space, something misspelled. It might be that the file correctly uploaded, but that you simply can't find it. So there it is. I can see my project. It's um, a work in progress. Um, and so yours might look similar to this, or you might actually be trying to make it exactly like this example. Be sure to look at the rubric to make sure that you're meeting all of the requirements, and to be sure to make sure that your project list reflects the syllabus in the course. Thanks.